<laughs> Hi, I'm Antoinette Manis, 24. I've been doing PCA care for about four years. <laughs> My sister got me the job when I was 20 years old. I've been doing it ever since. It's so unnatural. Who's the first client you have had? What conditions did they have? Do you remember? First client I ever had had CP, cerebral palsy. So how has your view on disabled people changed versus, you know, when you didn't work with them? Honestly, yeah. I've always I've always been around disabled people, but it only has changed more so that I want to help. I want to help them more because you know I'm more hands on than versus when I was younger. But what has, if anything, like your perception about disabled people? Oh, and how I mean, you interact with them? Well, first off. Just because you're physically disabled does not mean you mentally aren't all the way up there. Can and I get an amen? Amen. Because there's so many disabled people that I've came across that I've worked with that just, they just like, just like me. They just can't physically provide. So, um, what was the most surprising thing that you have learned in your hands-on experience? With people with disabilities. Like, what do you mean most surprising? I don't know, like... Like, things that people do? Yeah, like we do. Like... Like, the fact that you be getting drunk? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that that surprises me only because, you know, like you said, it's the, per, it's the perspective thing of when you don't... When you're not really hands-on with disabled people, right. you don't think that they do the basic... Like, the same stuff we do to have fun, like yes. get drunk or even smoke marijuana or smoke cigarettes. And I, and that's so not to be surprising. Have you ever had someone who smoked marijuana? Don't say their name. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. And yep. did that surprise you? It surprised the living daylights out of me. I was like, for real? So that kind of took you back a little bit? Yeah, because it was like, hmm. I didn't know. Like you said, it's the whole, when you look at a disabled person, you have a perspective. You assume, you automatically assume that disabled people can't partake in this stuff. What do you feel now, people saying that disabled people are like inspirations? Because I personally oh, hate I, that. I feel like I'm just living my life. But I can understand <laughs> where you would feel that way, for, but for those people, you and I, yeah. well, for people like me, who don't have to go every day waking up in a wheelchair having to depend on somebody to take care of me. Like, y'all, disabled people have to do that. Like, that shows that even though you don't like it, you still con you still conquering all that extra yes. whoop de whoop 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 because you have to. So what did you think about, like, you know, the New Year's Eve party when I was taking, like, shots, 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 shots? Oh, the New Year's Eve party was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome and hilarious. And it was like, oh, man. I kept checking. I kept coming back to check up on you, though. Like, I didn't leave you hanging. Cause, well, um, I mean, uh, I mean if you that, can handle your liquor. Was that surprising thing? So, nope. somebody uh, nope. get that trash to I feel like, regardless, if you can handle your liquor... Then do it. I mean, it, it it obviously it surprises me because you have to drive a wheelchair. And, but do you know um when I went to um what's the bar up there um uh, baby? Mm -hmm. I got a confrontation with this lady. She was absolutely offended that you were drinking, drinking and disabled, and she just assumed. Then I was on all these life sustaining medication. Yeah, she was. Just, That's what irritates me about people. Was, like my attendant literally had to get between us because she was getting kind of closed up in my face. Like, but see, that's what irritates me with to people on the street. Like, 
I'm sorry, my ankle. Oops. But that's what irritates me with people on the street. Just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean you're on life-sustaining medication that if you don't take this medication, you'll die. Or if you drink this alcohol, you'll die. It, no, no. Um, no. You've been do you've been disabled all your life. You know what you can and can't do. What's that law there, uh park uh um it's got that big lamp. Mm-mm. You talk about on fifth street? It's like where the catfish is like in park park side or something like that. Yeah, park yeah, park uh, place. Park place, yeah. They will not serve. Disabled people. Really? Yeah, they said they will not serve me. They will not let me in. And I tried to That's get, discrimination. I tried to get beer from them. Because it was like the one of those festivals, like the Memphis. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even get beer from them. They refused. That's discrimination. And I said, my dad, I would have refused to give it to her because they... They knew it was for uh, you. But does that surprise you when you hear stories like that? It does. It does, because it's like, it doesn't matter whether you're in a wheelchair or not. If you got the ID to get yourself a beer, you should be allowed to do that. If you got the money to get yourself a beer, you should be allowed to do that. Ain't nobody in this world that should tell you, your grown self, that you're not allowed to drink or you're not allowed to do something. Does that surprise you that, like, even though it was, like, 2017, we're still struggling with the same it, having rights like anybody else? It, it, it doesn't. It, it does because we in 2017, and as many years as we then went on, and everybody in this world then said, oh, we need to treat people equally, it don't surprise me because regardless of if you say we need to treat people equally, ain't nobody been treated equally forever. <laughs> that that seems to be the case across races, across gender. Um, like, I frankly don't care if you gay, straight, you a man, a woman, you want to be a man, but you really a woman. I don't care. Like, you be you, 100% be yourself. If you disable and you like to smoke weed... And puff, puff, pass. What do you think about those people who say, I shouldn't drink because I'm already being punished by God, and when I get up there, it's going to punish me. Yeah, okay. I'm like, okay, your life, I don't tell you what you should do with your life. Don't tell me what I should do with mine. And definitely, definitely don't tell me what God's doing to my life because you don't know what God got in store for me. Do you view disabled people as being punished? No. By God? Do you think? I've, you want to know my personal opinion about when I see a disabled person? And I mean, when it comes to God. Personally, I feel like if you're disabled, then God chose you to be disabled for a reason because you can handle you most likely can handle it better say you could handle it better than if you had a little brother or a little sister that was disabled you probably mm-hmm. you probably could handle that better you can handle that better than that little brother or little sister and god knew that so he put that in your hand because you you still here and i personally think we take turns like i know a lot of religious Mm-hmm. Don't believe me, punishment, and I don't make a poo poo or people's religion, so please don't email me. But right. about religion, but I believe that we all take turns. Like in this life, you're my caretaker, but in the next couple of lives, somehow maybe I'll be your caretaker in yeah. some way. It may not be the same role reversal. I know, I might be a cat. And you might be my owner. No, I don't mean like that. No. I <laughs> That's think, a joke. I think people transfer and other people. I think animals transfer and other animals. That's in me. I mm. hope I don't come back as a People think things change. <laughs> I hope you don't come back as a dog either. I have no Chinese people find me if I have a dog. <laughs> Fight up in the walk, so where... What do you think about um, 
You know, like marijuana being a viable option for uh, if it works, uh, management. If it works and it works better than pills, do it. I'm, I am pro marijuana all the way. I don't find nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying I do it, but I don't find nothing wrong with it. I feel like if it makes you happy and it do what. If it do what it's supposed to do for you, hey. You know, I think in my pain last couple of years, and my last day, I want to rip it off some days. Um, and a lot of these pills, can you show them the gather pentin and the maloxa? You want me to pull it out? Yeah. I just show them the bottle. Two. What are these pains? Uh. That's for pain and inflammation. This one? Yeah. This is, what is it, meloxicam? And it's like ibuprofen kind of, but like... A little bit stronger. Stronger than that. Well, A little bit stronger than ibuprofen. Well, it's way stronger, but it's, it's that kind of... But it don't come through. It's not class. It worked, but you got gabapentin for nerves. Um, this is what they got me on, man. Meloxicam is how many milligrams? Meloxicam, 7.5 milligrams. Gabapentin is 300. 10 milligrams. The meloxicam is not so bad, but, um, gabapentin is three times a day. And I can take the meloxicam up to two times a day. Mm-hmm. And what are the side effects the same on the label? Which one, both? Yeah. The meloxicam side effects are uh, it may cause dizziness. The gabapentin, um, if you have a mental or mood changes, mental mood changes, confusion, worsening feelings of sadness and fear. Uh, thoughts of suicide, it may cause blurred vision, it may cause dizziness, uh, cause you to get drowsy if you drink it with alcohol, obviously, because you're not really supposed to take medications with alcohol. Nice. But people do it. And when I drink, I just uh, cut these doses out. Yeah.